All right, guys, this is a revisit. Uh, this will be my third time here. The first time was the day of the fire. The second time was the couple days after the fire. And this is about four or five days after the fire. So what I want to let you guys know is that since the original fire, uh, it was, uh, it burned for uh, hours uh, and all through that night and they got it pretty much under control. Subsequently, over the last five or six days, there's been three fires here. Uh, one at 1075, another one with two and two, and I guess the third one with two and two. They had, because uh, uh, some of these uh, lithium ion batteries rekindled um, like they do sometimes. So I'm just gonna do a quick video so you guys can see. Uh, a lot of these apartments, it looks like they have uh, tons of uh, uh, hoarding conditions. If you look inside that apartment right there, okay, that's loaded with stuff. That one up there is loaded with stuff and a lot of the other ones are. So anyway, what's left here, it looks like the FDMY and whoever else is working on this project completely gutted the store inside. There's absolutely nothing left but the walls. Um, we can't go up close to it because they got it all cordoned off still. Um, but it's got it. There's nothing inside in there but the walls. And they brought in a lot of more of the uh, chemical. I forget the name. I think it's Cell Block X. And uh, in case they went up again. And they moved all the uh, drums the salvage drums they moved all the salvage drums into the middle of the street and there they are um, clear the camera there it's a little blurry um, that's loaded up with hundreds of lithium-ion batteries they've all been sealed it looks like they've been labeled they're being prepared to be transported at some point or another also, I don't know what's underneath this tarp here. There's something there that they don't want exposed or they don't want nobody to see. And then there's another one back there, right around there and there. And I don't know what's in all these bags. They might be batteries, they might be something else. Also, there you see a lot of the bikes, they're all missing their lithium ion batteries. So they must have went through each bike that was on that big pile that day over there and they brought in a giant dumpster. Uh, the dumpster looks like it's filled to capacity. What's in there, I don't know, but I'm assuming there's a lot of batteries. Uh, I mean, bikes that have been stripped of their batteries and the tires and uh, stuff that was on the sidewalk the other day. So all the, all the bikes are probably in there. They're all stripped of their batteries. A lot of this stuff has to be batteries there and there and over there. And you see uh, the building's gonna have to do a lot of boarding up. Uh, they still have police presence on scene and they have uh, an engine watch line and the fire marshals are there on the corner. Also monitoring the situation. So I'm gonna go around the other side and then uh, we're gonna be out of here. Uh, it looks like they got it well prepared in case another incident breaks out uh, with all the cell block stuff they got over there and so forth and so on. All right, so I came over to the other side and that one area there where they have that covered with plastic um, right there, that was loaded with e-bikes too. I don't know if they belong to the business, but that was completely loaded with the e-bikes. And this is where that big pile of e-bikes was the other day. Um, so we just happened to be in the area. We didn't come down specifically for this, but it's a good update somebody left flowers here sadly for the four people that passed away uh, not good terrible situation would happen here terrible anyway with that said uh, two and two we're gonna 
take up. We'll see you all on the other side. Uh, Madison Avenue and Catherine. Not Madison Avenue, Madison Street and Catherine. Two and two, we'll see you on the other side.